Hi, I'm David. I'm Sebastian. I'm Carlos. I'm Urs. And, and we're all Devo. And thank you for watching Music News. See you soon. Il Devo, it's great to see you all. Feeling good today? Yeah, yes, feeling good. indeed. Thanks. Good, good, good. Next month you start off your castles and country tour. Are you looking forward to it? Sure, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. It's going to be beautiful, amazing background, sceneries, history, and we're coming with our tour timeless, and it's going to look spectacular. Excellent. I mean, they're playing some absolutely amazing venues. How did the idea sort of come about? Well, we've been kind of touring for the last 15 years, and we've obviously come through the UK quite a few times. And it's just an idea to change things up a bit, you know, not playing the same venues every time, not coming to the O2 and coming to Manchester Arena, not that there's anything wrong with these venues, but just to bring a bit of a different element. Most of these shows are outdoors and as Sebastian said, you know, the backdrop is going to be these beautiful castles, stately homes, these open grounds of the, of the outdoor festivals and what better to make the backdrop for our passionate and dramatic music. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, after 15 years as well, are you still enjoying playing live <laughs> just as much? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, that's the that's the real moment when we can show that, that we are real singers. Because obviously, when you when you are in the in <laughs> really? the studio, <laughs> no, no, it's true. When, when you're in the studio, I mean, we, we all record separately, and then when we do the harmonies, we just come together. Obviously, when we are in a show, that's the moment that that we have only one shot to show that we are that we are a band, and we are we have those voices that we have, and then when we sing together, we are like a cocktail molotov. <laughs> Definitely, and the incredible Michael Ball is joining you. Quite an amazing special guest to pull out the, the hat for the tour. Do you know him very well? Um, we have uh, crossed each other's paths a few times. I love working with Michael Ball. We recorded um, Love Changes Everything yeah. uh, from Aspects of Love on our album a Musical Affair. And he was the producer for that, and, and it was the first time we had met him. Um, Carlos and I are, are kind of aficionados of the music theater repertoire and so we were both aware of him and uh, he's just a spectacular person consummate professional really fun guy really funny guy and uh, we had a great time it was really easy working with him and and uh, yeah yeah that real Devo tickets on music newscom are selling incredibly fast I mean how have you nurtured such a, a worldwide sort of loyal fan base well I think we've been just lucky really that people have loved our music since day one. Uh, obviously nothing comes without hard working, you know, working really hard. And we've been to a lot of places over the years. Um, but it, the, the truth is we would not be able to come without our fans across the world. And here, where it's, I was told, I remember like 15 years ago that it was the audience were you know they like something but then they move on to the next thing i didn't find that with il divo i'm so amazed because 15 years later you know they just come even to see us in the u.s when we're in the u.s and while we're here it's like an extended family to see all the, the fans that we get to meet actually when we do the meet and greet and i find that really amazing all the stories that we hear yeah i mean 15 years ago in the uk it's where you formed are you happy memories of that time or no, oh, absolutely. That was spectacular. I mean, just a funny way of how we all got together with the casting of Simon Cowell and this vague idea he had and we all said no, not interested in the beginning and then somehow st still started working together. I remember well saying to Simon in his office when I saw the, the uh, sales awards he had, oh, I'd like to manage to get one of these one day, you know, like at least a gold disc. And I remember we did like <laughs> one of the early morning TV shows uh, in the UK in November, just like uh, two weeks after we've launched and we got a five times platinum award for the UK. So very happy memories of yeah. our beginnings in the UK, definitely. I mean, back in 2003, did you think that 15 years later you'd have been sitting here selling 30 million yeah. albums? No way. No. No. No, 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 no. It's a dream. <laughs> I think, you know, for any bands nowadays, when we see a lot of acts coming out of TV shows or what, whatever, YouTube, they come and they go. And it's sad. It seems to be moving constantly now. But we are 
very lucky because we are quite what's interesting is people don't always know about the band but they seem to come and see our concert and I'm always amazed at how quiet we are like we don't have a huge exposure but we have a huge fan base and that's amazing yeah I mean the new album Timeless is out in August what was your thinking about that sort of song collection there well we were um, we were looking back across all of our albums as we started this process um, you know, a year ago uh, just a, just about a year ago uh, our contract with uh, our record company was coming to a, a cadence and uh, but we were not ready to stop so we put our heads together and said all right well what would what, what would we do if we were to make an album with us at the helm and just guiding the whole thing and so we said all right well let's look at our previous material. What is it about it, Il Divo, that makes it work? We get this question all the time. What's the one thing about Il Divo? We can't answer it. We have no idea. Um, but what we can say is that there are so many different types of music that we've gone after. We've gone after music theater. We've gone after uh, Latin music. We've gone after standards, ballads, uh, pop, more classically oriented. And somehow we bring all of these songs into our universe. And so we, we wanted to make something that was a standout album that was, that was just as iconic as the first one. So we started looking at all the iconic songs kind of across uh, since the beginning of recorded music. And we were able to just narrow it down to one from every decade. And, and that, was, that was our impetus to just kind of, you know, go after the most iconic songs ever written. Yeah, I mean, it couldn't have been an easy process. Were any any sort of song selection disagreements, shall we say? No, no, no. The good thing that, that, that we, I mean, been together for for fifteen years. I mean, we know we know exactly what a Levo, uh, um, what we need for a Levo. So then, I mean, of course, we can we give our opinions. We say, okay, we like this song, whatever. But, but the good thing, we are like a small family. So so mm -hmm. so we just speak about music, and we we just decide. Yeah, I mean, it's an incredible achievement um, having sold as many records as you have. I mean, as you mentioned, you've got gold, 160 gold and platinum albums, um, 50 number ones. What achievements for you individually sort of stand out as that was one of my proudest moments? For me, singing for the Queen. For, um, sorry, I forgot. Uh, it's not her name. What is it called? Um, which one? The show? The 60th, uh, the birthday of her 60th Thank year you. of reign. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> the Queen's no, because we, I, so I apologize, we sang a few times. The Jubilee, yeah. Yeah, the Jubilee, that's the yes. word. We sang a couple of times, actually, or three times for the Queen, and I just couldn't remember the... Um, anyways, so singing for the Queen at the Jubilee, that was, to me, exceptional, because, first of all, I used to live here for 10 years. Yeah. So I had, um, you know, I, when you live in a country, you feel the... Um, the energy and the people and you get to know the history a bit more so I was impressed in that sense right I don't think there's going to be any queen that I have like six 60 what, 60 years is that right in the, in her reign right is that how you say yeah. that's right god my English <laughs> I, forgive me right um, out, out of it. Uh, I doubt it um, <laughs> however I felt privileged that we were able to be invited you know there's so few bands that are invited throughout the world and we were part of that event that to me was fantastic yeah and for yourselves sort of well there was there was one i mean obviously when we did the the barbara Streisand tour we were mm. we were at the Madison square garden and then <laughs> in the in the intermission they knocked in our door someone and opened the door it was hillary clinton because she she was a big fan of Elvis, so we went out. We we, uh, we did the photo with her, and then Bill Clinton arrived, saying, "Hey, I would do a I should do a, a tour with you when you're playing saxophone." So that was that was an amazing experience. <laughs> Ever taken him up on that offer? Oh, well, well, we couldn't. Well, <laughs> yes, yeah. difficult with the schedules. Yeah, yeah. We, we lost yeah. yeah. touch. We didn't change phone. We didn't find we didn't, <laughs> didn't find the song for him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you sang it in many languages as well. If you had to pick the language of music, what would it be? Love. <laughs> oh, excuse very, me, that's very true. Good, very good. <laughs> well, the main language that we always use is Spanish, that's for sure. I mean, being a Spaniard, I mean, of course, Spain is the language of, of whatever you want to do. 
And <laughs> 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 have you started? I know it's very early, but have you started thinking about the next project, album project? We what? have. Yeah. We have. We're thinking about it, of course, because we have got yeah, we have. We are talking oh, about yes, it we have. sporadically. <laughs> uh, we obviously just about started this world tour with Timeless. Uh, we started in Mexico in April. We played about ten shows now. Um, we're going through Europe, a few cities, and then the UK, and then we carry this on well into 2019, and we're literally playing all around the world. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you name it, from China to Patagonia. Uh, and uh, yeah, probably 2019, fourth quarter, we're planning on releasing a new album, but I'm obviously not going to tell you anything more at this moment. Live album, possibly? <laughs> no, I don't think so. We're probably going to release another DVD of this show uh, at some point down the line because we have come to, to notice that our fans do appreciate that experience very much. Whether they've been to the show and they just look at it again to remember their experience or they didn't have a chance to catch a live show. But yeah, it's a medium that our fans enjoy very much so I think we're going to do that again definitely. When you tackle a new song, do you always have a quite a clear vision of what you what you want to achieve? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we don't. It's it's a funny it's uh, a funny process that we we've been through. Um, whether it was a song that we would put forward to the record company or a song that they would give to us, you know, we we'd listen to a, a load of different versions to try and kind of gain a sense of the potential directions it could go. But ultimately, when we would get into the studio, it would be about kind of dissecting the song into manageable, digestible chunks and seeing what the arc of the song would, de how it would develop organically. Um, we do kind of, we know approximately where we start in intimate and we end big finale. How we get from intimate to big finale changes from song to song and, uh, and we really just kind of take it one line at a time so that we make sure that we have that build and we have that arc but we don't blow it out too early and we don't let it dip too too late um so yeah it's 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 really in the mo moment process i mean you mentioned that you're playing all over the world i mean do you ever feel like the schedule i mean you're always on the move that the schedule's too much for you um, it is in a point but uh, yeah, it, yeah but that's that's what you're doing i mean obviously we we are we are conscious that that's that's uh, that's what we're doing. We are artists. We need to be on tour because without being on tour, you're not uh, you're not gonna go to 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 all the I mean to to reach all the fans that we have worldwide. And uh, it's tough because obviously, well, you have this uh, this jet lag and your time difference and everything. But that's that's part of the of the beauty of this business. I mean, you have two sides: the beauty and the negative side is just being tired. But the beauty is you you just. Uh, 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 go to several counties and you you meet several people. Yeah, so always in a beautiful place, sunny London today. And you spread the love. <laughs> yeah. that, that was the last yes. thing. Yes, we came here. Um, which yeah. artists do you, do you listen to to relax away from medieval? Tom Jones, myself. Yeah. Frank Sinatra is pretty. <laughs> that, that's what I listen to. I love Coldplay. Coldplay is great. Um, Tons of arts. La Labyrinth. I've been listening to Labyrinth. Right. Actually, I listen to his live stuff. I like it a lot. His writing and uh, shares how he's doing his writing. I, yeah, I think there's tons of really amazing talents out there. Huge. Yeah. That's what social media, I think, has helped just for people who didn't have the chance to show their talent. I mean, we live in turbulent times at the moment. Do you think music can play yeah. a part in sort of healing the world? Yeah. If the world wants it. I'm not entirely convinced the world wants to heal. Very true. Very but true. Music is healing. Yeah. Music is healing. It's, it, music is whatever you want it to be. Mm. That's the thing. If you want to put on an angry track and just gnash your teeth or <laughs> get depressed and have that be the soundtrack to your life, yeah, you can have that. If you want it to be the happy and sunshine of your life, yeah, it can be that. It can be deep, it can be shallow, it can be whatever you want. And that's why I say, you know, I'm not entirely sure that the world wants to heal because everyone has different priorities and everyone has a different karmic path in life. So, you know, it's just a soundtrack. It's whatever you want it to be. Excellent answer. And away from music, what would you like to do to, to relax? 
I love going to the gym. I really, that helps me a lot it's ever since actually. I started going to the gym when I was about 15. And on and off, depending on where I was, life-wise, career-wise, also, obviously with our travels, it's not always possible. But it's something I enjoy very much. And besides that, I'm a bit of a gearhead, so I like motorbikes and cars. So uh, don't get a chance to enjoy that very much because I'm never home and can look after my toys. But <laughs> <laughs> by yourself, myself, uh, I'm just a little bit uh, workaholic because I never stop. So so when I'm when I should rest, uh, I just produce other things, my own show, whatever, and th then I'm always busy doing things. So that that's that's what I do. Excellent. Songwriting, I love uh, hanging out with tons of people and just go in the studio and try to have no expectation of what we're gonna, what we have to do, what we're gonna do. So my publishing sends me to places and I go and sound write with quite a few people. So that's amazing. Um, and uh, the other thing that I love is just being, obviously that's the number one thing, being with my family, with my wife and my kids going gardening, cycling with them, going on the beach, surfing, paddleboarding, all this kind of thing like that. I don't surf much, but paddleboarding, yeah. Excellent. Um, in the downtime, in between um, touring and, and recording the album, love being at home, um, being out in nature, um, and I also, I, I agree with Urs, the whole working out thing, you, you'd be surprised how much buildup of energy there is being in in this kind of lifestyle. The amount of waiting that you do, waiting to go on stage, waiting for your flight, waiting to check in, waiting for X, Y, and Z, the car ride to and from, you're waiting all the time. And there's always a buildup of energy with that, that for me, the best way to, to spend that is, is going to the gym, going for a good run. And beyond that, I really like being uh, just kind of creative with whatever is crossing my path. And at the moment that has become like a transition into directing, directing film. Excellent. I mean, you've achieved so much, as we've established. I mean, do you still have, as a band, sort of burning musical ambitions? There are many, yeah, of course. I mean, we, I think as an artist, you, you can never say, we made it. You need always to, well, to be there for the fans, because the fans are, are just expecting that you bring something new. Therefore, we just do all the time a concept album, for example, with the timeless songs from the 30s until, until now. Uh, the the album before it was a Latino album, so so you need always to to give something new, and and I think that's that's the magic of us four. We we just never stop thinking to do something new. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for the time. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks. For somebody that um, hasn't come across Il Divo yet, and you had to pick four songs to say, check these out. They sum us up as a live band. One each. What songs would you say? I would pick Nella Fantasia. Adagio. Ola, our latest single. Mm. Regresa Mi, our very first single. Excellent. And for some, lastly, for somebody to come along to a live show for the first time, what can they expect at an Il Divo concert? We're going to blow your face off <laughs> <laughs> with our voices, with music. You're going to have a great time. There's not going to be a single moment that you're going to um, be longing for something else. It's a, it, we find this all over the world. We find the, uh, the audiences are just so present with us. Mm. They're on the edge of their seats, which gives us the energy to just give them even more. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Any messages to music news viewers out there? No, just come to see the shows. <laughs> no, <laughs> music. Music. Yeah, yeah, thank you for all your support. Yes. Uh, keep checking in, ilzivo.com or uh, Live Nation, you can find all the tickets online. We hope to see you, we love you, and see you soon. Oh, just call me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.